It's being in the, the present moment, understanding how you're thinking, why you're thinking, and how, and understanding how your thinking is actually affecting what's going on around you. Mindfulness is knowing all four positions on the ship and how to make sure the ship doesn't sink on its way to the destination or destiny or whatever. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was 1,230. Another reason consistency is so important. Just another reason. Today, for episode number 1,231, what is mindfulness to you? Went on a podcast the other day, Alan. This mm -hmm. podcast has been graced by Gretchen Rubin and Jack Canfield and some very, very, very successful human beings. And this podcast was all about mindfulness. And one of the first questions, I had a moment before I went on where I said, I don't really feel like I'm, I don't know. When it comes to mindfulness, I don't feel like I'm all that tapped in. I really don't know what's going on most of the time. <laughs> but when I went on the show, one of the first questions this person asked me was, what is mindfulness to you? And I said, to me, mindfulness and I paused similar to that and then I said something along the lines of it's understanding yourself in the moment while it's happening long before you need to reflect mindful yeah mindfulness to me is knowing what's going on in the moment and I think I probably was more eloquent with it and explained it a little bit deeper because I was in flow but I think it's hyperconsciousness to me mindfulness is hyperconsciousness it's being in the, the present moment, understanding how you're thinking, why you're thinking, and how, and understanding how your thinking is actually affecting what's going on around you. That is what mindfulness is to me. And I think a lot of us want to be more present, and we want to have more presence in our life, and we want to be able to enjoy moments more. And I think the best way to do that is to be more self-aware. I really, really, really believe that to... The episode we did on, please hold, 1,228, where I talked about the concert. I had to be mindful of the fact that I was, so I don't want to go through the story, but just jump back to that episode if you didn't hear it. I wanted to be, I had to be mindful of the fact that I was overwhelmed. Like, I'm, we're late for this event. I'm standing in front of people. I don't know where our seat is. It's loud as all hell. It's just so much going on. I had to be mindful of in this moment, I am triggered. I'm not going to be able to enjoy this. I'm going to be colder to the people around me. I need to understand that I am triggered. My state is off. I want to be mindful of that so I can I can fix that. I think it's just being hyperconscious moment to moment. That's really what I think it is. And hyperconscious, by the way, for Say those it. who don't know, means acutely aware. And back in the day, we had a podcast, as you know, mm, yeah. the Hyper Conscious Podcast. Change the way you think, change the way you act, correct? Change the way you live. Yes. Which, in many ways, is very yes. similar to Next Level University. Yes. Next Level University, level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. There it is. There's the shirt. If you're on YouTube, Kevin is showing the shirt. Yeah. It's backwards. But change the way you think, change the way you act, change the way you live. Nice. I still have mine as well. Shout hyper, out to my, my wonderful wife. Podcast. And I believe Taryn and Emilia came up with the idea together. So shout out to our amazing partners. I think it was where Taryn, Taryn originated the idea. I think Emilia helped. I think. Well, shout out to And we were, we were about to go on stage for an event called Top Notch Live back then. And it was an event that we co-hosted and we, they took us hey, into the back hey, room before the... We hosted the event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the, this yes. event that we hosted, <laughs> and uh, they gave it to us right before we started the event. It was a really beautiful moment. Beautiful Even moment. that, uh, dude. I was thinking. It's funny. I was thinking about this today. Sorry to interrupt you. I so that day, I got there at like I don't know five in the morning. I'm setting up the laptop. I'm making sure. Every, again, that's why I say I, I don't meet like for a long time. Alan and I. Uh, kind of stood behind the fact that we said, you know what, we co-hosted that event. In reality, we we hosted that event. We did all the behind the scenes 100%. work. We're the yeah. ones who got the speakers. So I want to take ownership for that, not from an ego place, but we deserve it. We worked really hard mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. So 
I was there at like five o'clock that morning. I'm setting up the laptop. I'm making sure the PowerPoints work. I'm connected with it. Everything. DJ, everything. Timer. The timer. Yeah. There's a picture of me online of that. And the day's rolling. People are starting to show up. It's like, oh, okay, this actually might work. Cool. All right. Brant Pinvidic's there. There's, you know, there's a lot of people. Tori Leto's there. Mark Metry's there. There's a lot of people there. And I'm getting ready to go. I'm not ready to go on stage, but I think the event was getting ready to, like, to really start. And Taryn came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I have a present for you. And even in that moment, I was so triggered. I was like, I can't do this right now. I literally cannot do this right now. I'm like losing my mind. And I had to be mindful of that. And I took a second, which was hard for me because I was just, let's get this thing going. But I was literally crying after because of how, I don't want to say how bad I felt, but I felt like she's trying to be very caring in this moment. She's trying to be loving and supportive. And she was so thoughtful to, to do this, her and Emilia. And here I am not mindful of how this is making her feel. Like that's another example of it. I just wanted to throw that in there because contextually we were already talking about it. Yeah, definitely. And I think I want to, I want to give this brief, I'm, I'm starting to realize that a lot of these principles, it's the simplest things that make them land. Emilia and I went to lunch with my mom on Sunday. So yesterday. And normally Emilia and I do intermittent fasting and we eat in the evenings and uh, after the gym. So we're like, okay, we're going to go to lunch and we're going to go straight to the gym from lunch. And we need to be mindful of the fact that we're both going to be exhausted because we eat, we ate like a big meal. We, we went, we had multiple apps, full entrees. It was, it was awesome. living the dream. We were living the dream. It was great. And it was delicious food too. It was like a pub style. Awesome. So we know in advance, this is the mindfulness piece. Okay. We're going to be tired. We normally don't eat in the middle of the day, so we're definitely not going to be, you know, as mentally focused as normal because we get really tired after we eat. And we're not going to want to go to the gym. Let's decide together in advance we're going because otherwise we're going to have to come home, do the rest of our Sunday together, and then we're going to have to leave again. We don't want to leave twice on a Sunday. Sunday is the one day where we really want to, like, make it a we day is what we call it. We have the, the me the me's and the we, which is we have a business built around it called the we. And essentially the we is the relationship and it's compl- comprised of the two me's. Okay. So we're in the car. We're in the a car driving home from lunch, uh, not home. And I wasn't mindful in this moment. We actually passed our house. Like, and I was like, babe, you're, uh, we're coming up on it down this hill. And it, she's like, no, no, we're going to the gym. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're going to the gym. That's right. <laughs> and again, the mindfulness means not autopilot. I was on autopilot thinking we're going home. We just ate tummy full home (laughs) nap, (laughs) nap time, (laughs) right? So instead we go to the gym and our gym is in a parking lot of a big grocery store, fairly big grocery store. And it's Sunday and we don't usually go out Sunday day. So it's like packed, Mm. right? Full parking lot, believe it or not, empty gym. Full parking lot for the grocery store, not big football, big football weekend. Yeah, big football weekend. Okay, so we get in the parking lot and we have to be mindful of the fact that the gym might be more crowded. And so not only do we not want to go, not only are we exhausted, not only do we want to take a nap, but now we know the gym's going to be crowded and the equipment's not going to be there. Not to mention it's also still January of 2023, so there's a lot of more people in the gym typically. So, and we're sitting there in the parking lot and we're like, the last thing we want to do is go into this gym. Usually it's pretty smooth sailing. Usually Emilia and I are gym partners. We we just get it done. It's no big deal. We sat in this parking lot for an obnoxious amount of time. I want to say 15 to 20 minutes. Just, I don't want to say complaining about this. <laughs> I would say venting about how, and we were playful with it. We were having fun, you know, having conversations. And, and we were talking about, at one point it was like, we do not want to go. We we want we could. And we, we joked. We were like, we could just go home. We could just go home. Right? And regret it later. Let's just do that. Joking. We end up getting this awesome workout. And because I ate so much food, I actually had a really good pump. And I ended up being a lot stronger than usual. Because when I'm fasted, my strength is definitely taking a hit. And then afterwards, we ended up having this amazing evening. Because obviously, we, we got it done. And I think that the only way we were able to do that is being mindful. Mindful of the fact that in advance, we knew we were going to go to lunch and we committed in advance together 
to make sure we go to the gym after. Mindful of the fact that I was on autopilot and we're actually going to the gym, don't worry about the taking the right turn to go home. Mindful of the fact that we're going to be tired and exhausted and not want to go. Mindful of the fact that we're sitting in the parking lot and that we could leave, but if we do, we're going to regret it later. Mindful of the fact that we both have huge weeks and we're going to North Carolina next weekend. So we got to make sure we weight train because during the travel days, we're not going to end up weight training most likely. We're probably going to end up going for a walk or whatever. Mm. And mindful of the fact that it's going to be a heavy week because we're going to have to record way more episodes because I'm going away for five days. So that's all mindfulness, I think. You can call it mental fitness. You can call it mindfulness. You can call it metacognition. You can call it all these different names. But I think mindfulness is realizing your state in advance, realizing it in the moment, and then trying to Miyagi yourself, for lack of better phrasing, of make a better, more intelligent decision, even when and if you're triggered. Just like that moment with Taryn before you stepped on stage with the the hyperconscious shirt, Mm. you had to be mindful and empathetic in that moment and not just autopilot, get upset. And I think that mindfulness is probably something we don't talk about enough. I would say so. Because there's mindset and then there's mindful. Mindset is your long-term belief system, paradigm, decisions. Mindful is on the day-to-day basis, how how conscious are you, how hyper-conscious are you of your state and of your decisions and of what's motivating you and of your emotions and of your trauma responses. You know, it's kind of a whole thing, so I'm not surprised there's podcasts about it. Hello, my name is Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and I'm host of the Business of Happiness podcast. When I met Kevin and Alan two years ago, I had no idea of how much impact they would have not only on the success for my business, but also on my life. They've given me enormous perspective and true strategies, true tactics to take in my everyday business plan and in my life plan to make an even greater success. Kevin and Alan, thank you so much. I couldn't even begin to express my gratitude for all you've done for me. And if you're looking for similar mentorship, I highly recommend these incredible experts at the Next Level University. Yeah, I think it's very, I don't know, it's important to understand how to get in touch with your mindfulness too. And I think that's why on the episode I said, I like to reflect. I think reflecting is super important. But what if you were so understanding of yourself that you could reflect in real time. I think that's really what my ultimate goal is, is like in, in this moment, I'm, you know, hypothetically, in this moment, I'm forgetting what I'm saying. So when I forget what I say, I don't listen as well to Alan. So I don't really know what Alan just said. So it's going to be a weird transition when I transition to what I say. Like that, that level of yeah, just that's understanding. That's called metacognition. But yeah. Yeah. It's, and I want to just share this real quick. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no, you're good. We all have brains, which I think of as the command center. Metacognition is the commander. So, like a ship at sea, right? I guess would be a good analogy. This, the, Hopefully this will land. There's four main positions on the ship. There's the crew, which sets the sail and rows the boat, the ship. There's the first mate that runs the crew. And in this case, the crew is your actions. Mm-hmm. The first mate is running the crew, which is managing behavior, which I think is your like your emotions. And then you've got the captain, which is sailing towards the horizon with the compass. And that's, I think, your mental. So, so far you have physical and emotional and then mental. And then last, which is, I think, the spiritual, which is the the, the captain also has someone below deck charting the course. And charting the course is kind of like, think about it this way. The person charting the course is what you want for your life. The person steering the ship is where you want for this quarter this year. Then the first mate is the one you work with to run the crew, which is your moment-to-moment emotions. And then you've got the crew, which is actually doing the behaviors. Mm. And so I think that's an interesting analogy of like, are you crashing? And then are you letting the first mate take the wheel and crash you into the rocks? Mindfulness is knowing all four positions on the ship and how to make sure the ship doesn't sink on its way to the destination or destiny or whatever. So um, it's the first time I've ever broken it down like that. I like it. But thank you, I bro. think I think of it more of maybe smaller. I think of it like very just in, in current time is the way I think of it. But I understand because I think that's 
at least that's what I always connected it to. Like mindfulness is like in the moment. Well, you in this moment could think about your next decade or this moment. Right. And so metacognition is what everyone is talking about these days, which is all the kids are taking about. yourself out of your own self to analyze self, mm. then putting yourself back in yourself to like take an action. So mm. that's what I think. When I think of mindfulness, that's what I think of. Yeah. Right again. There's no right or wrong. That's in this what episode. it is. I think that's what it is. Yeah, again, yeah. But everyone has their own right, right, flavor exactly. of it. Right. For me, it's like I love reflecting. I think reflecting is super powerful. But the reason I like reflecting is because it helps me in the moment next time. Definitely. That I I like that. That's another. You and I reason. are doing that all the time. Right. Right. That's and that's the beautiful thing. On the last episode, I did that sort of future meditation. Where we, we had our listeners go into five years into the future and imagine what it might be like and then come back to now and see what's going to make the difference. That yeah. is mindfulness. That is one flavor of mindfulness. I was trying to figure out how old I was during the meditation, so I missed yeah. most of the benefits. <laughs> 33 is what I came Th up with. Thank you to What did you say? 33. 33, yeah. 33 years young. Um, yeah. That, well, I think, okay, is your definition that like the same as mine? Is that what you think mindfulness is? Mine is, the simplest form is take yourself out of yourself to analyze yourself. Yeah, okay. That, and and past, present, and future. How do you improve that? That so say, is practice, consistent practice. Okay, I was going to say, say somebody, somebody's listening and they say, yeah, that's what I, I feel like mindfulness, because I think there's levels, right? There's mindfulness of, I want to be present. Which I think it means like I'm existing in the moment, but there's also but, existing and influencing the moment. You you have the, what would the best version of Kevin do? Yeah. That is a form of going into future Kevin, not wanting to regret being lesser Kevin now. Yeah. So that's a form of quote unquote mindfulness or metacognition. Emilia is unbelievable at this. She, we've never fought in the three years we've been together, never any yelling or any of that, storming out, nothing. And honestly, it's more because of her than me. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is she's more emotionally, she can take herself out of the moment better than I can and stop the train from going down the negative track. Gen genuinely better. And I asked her recently, what's if you could slide one book across the table to your younger self, what would it be? For me, it would be The Compound Effect 10 times out of 10. For her, it was, um, oh, it's the theory of cons emotional construction versus emotional I'm gonna forget it's how emotions are made the name of the book is how emotions are made I forget the name of the author mm -hmm. but I I haven't read it and I was like wait a minute that's your most powerful book ever that you'd slide across the table and I haven't read it like that's a big issue and she said well and of course by the way I said it's an ebook emotional book so of course that's I think physical mental emotional spiritual development that we talk about on this podcast will go after this I think emotional development is my least of the four. Mm. And so I think it's the most of her four, which is awesome. Um, which is why we don't fight. Honestly, it's more her than me because she always stops the train long before it gets there. Whereas I'm still on autopilot triggered. Not every time, but like sometimes. Yeah, know? I understand. I can yeah. understand that. I think my, my emotional is one of my stronger suits. Makes sense. Makes right? sense. That's why we work so well M together. Mental was the one that you were, Needed help, which is why the Hyperconscious Podcast was born, because that's what you needed. Son. Yeah. Son. Little did I know what I needed was the Relationship Podcast. And the Hyperconscious Podcast, because you and I partnered up, you know, kind of boys. Oh, yeah, for sure. So that's what doing brought it. me to, the, to Emilia. Right. That's what I'm saying. Because she suggested an episode. Yeah, and we were like, I was like, dude, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, man. <laughs> do you and you're like no that? no no i do i actually know i know what this person's asking and i was like oh okay never mind After that was the recorded. only time i've ever understood our listeners you better were right than you. you were right that day that one time lessons were learned yep my friend little did i know that was my future wife yeah i mean we're not I, whenever right. i say that people are like oh you guys got married I was, no 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 future wife <laughs> i i understand right. because i know yeah. i know the way you think it's already it's already done okay we're reminiscing Yes. Um, if you're listening, what I would say is ask yourself the question that we asked ourselves. What is mindfulness to you? 
And are you are you really good at it? And when you think about it and you sit down and say, well, let me let me actually ask myself that question. On a scale of one to ten, how how good am I? Where are my rooms? Where are my opportunities for improvement? I guess. I have a lot of stories that I tell on other podcasts where it's like in real time, I'm trying to figure out how I feel so I can make sure I'm feeling the way I should and not reacting in a different way. So for me, I feel like it's something I'm very, very good at, but I also know when I get triggered, mindfulness can go out the window. So that's a good understanding for you to have. So if you're listening, ask yourself those questions and just check in. We don't talk about it probably as often as we should. And maybe this is a a good segue for us to do it more. So Maybe you, I mean, there's a lot of other podcasts that are specifically on that. Meditation is one of the reasons people meditate is for mindfulness. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to, to go about this. But for me, I'm going to say hyperconsciousness. That's what I'm going to say. You dig? I dig. Next level nation. As you know, on April 1st, 2023, we are gathering you and 49 other amazing human beings for an in-person experience. It's not a speech. It's not a presentation. I want it to be just a, a giant experience where you learn and you grow and you evolve and you meet people. But the thing that you do most is you check in with yourself and your identity. And that's the interesting thing about live events is when you come to a live event, you're already shifting your identity. I am the type of person who attends live events. If you've never been to one, you're already shifting yourself. So please join us. It will be in Worcester, Massachusetts, April 1st. Tickets are $97. We're only taking 50 people. We want it to be close. We want it to be personal. So please join us. I remember the first time I ever tried to convince Kev to go to an event and you were really scared. You had a, a lot of fear around it. Fear of planes, fear of flying there, fear of travel, fear of being there, not fitting in. This is an awesome opportunity to fear chase. If you are scared, it's not a red light. It might be a green light because those events really did change our trajectory forever. Um, We understood, you understood yourself so much more coming back. So Mm -hmm. that's the goal. We want to replicate for you what has transformed Kevin and myself. Okay. uh, I also want to talk about something. So speaking of mindfulness... It was a couple, I want to say a week or two ago, I reached out uh, or I I said something on the podcast that was kind of new and it was an experiment and it was next level life coaching. It didn't land well. And I reflected on it, again, mindfulness, and I realized that what I'm obsessed with, what I really adore, right? Everyone think about their number one passion right now. What do you just love even when it's hard? You love it even when it's hard. And that doesn't mean you love every minute, but you're always glad you did it. For me, it's peak performance. So I have two forms of coaching now. I have coaching, which is coaching individuals. And then I have consulting, which is really coaching businesses. Okay. So I'm separating them, coaching, consulting. If you're a listener of this show, my coaching, what I'm going to call it forever. And I already put this in my Instagram bio, which means it's legit. No, I'm joking. But it's peak performance coaching. I care so deeply about how to be more effective. I, I, I've been trying to become more of a peak performer in my own life pretty much my whole life, but really proactively and mindfully in the last seven or eight years. Even before Kevin and I got together, I was really, I had a productivity journal and I was tracking habits in these little journals and I was trying to become more effective. So if you want to track habits, if you want to be a peak performer, if you want, if you think that's your bottleneck, I'm your guy. When you get in my corner, I'll hold you accountable. You'll be more consistent in my corner. I can promise you that than you would be without it. So it's called peak performance coaching. You do not have to be a business owner for that. Business consulting, it's for business owners. Peak performance coaching is for individuals who want to get to the next level. Next level nation. Speaking of fears, as Alan mentioned in the beginning there, tomorrow for episode number 1,232, how many of your fears are a lie? I have a lot of fears that I'm currently facing and will be facing in the interim or the, I don't know, the upcoming future, I guess. So I wanted to talk about fears. The last time we did an episode on fears, I think, Alan, we were actually in Florida. So it is very timely that we do it again when you and I are going to be traveling. I'll be going further south of Florida, but I'm excited for that. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans, we have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.